Welcome, everybody, to the Bitcoin Ben J. Wade Crypto Show, brought to you by Crypto World. Every week, uh, we do a show here about cryptocurrencies and the economy, and, and we try and help you guys figure out this new way of living, this new economy. J. Wade Crypto, how you doing, brother? Doing good, doing good. Just trying to, uh, uh, you know, with, with what's going on in this space right now, just trying to uh, keep our head above water, right, with the economy and and also in the, the crypto space. We got some things like Celsius that's been in the news um, and other pretty prominent uh, hedge fund companies that have been affected. So... Yeah, but, but yeah, we're we're, we're kind of just keeping our head above water right now. It's part of the cycle, right? So it's it's uh, if you look at the, I think Michael Saylor said it best that if you hold Bitcoin and you look at it at a four year cycle, nobody's ever lost money in four years. Yeah, I uh, got to keep up with that. Yeah, I. That's why I'm just a hot, a hot hodler. Hold on for dear life. Yeah, well, someday when we when I have as much Bitcoin as you do, I can just do that, right? <laughs> but with me, I'm I'm trying to accumulate, and 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 sometimes when you do that, you take take a little bit of risk, but sometimes that little risk can come back, um, you know, especially with the Celsius. I know myself yeah. and a few people have been affected with with what's going what on exactly with Celsius. Happened there? I I heard about it. But with the economy and the interest rate and all that, I, uh, I, I didn't really dig very deep into it yet. Yeah, so Celsius is a pretty big. Um, so what, what they do is they, they, they provide loans against your crypto. And they also um, give you interest, right, for, uh, for custodying your, your Bitcoin and Ethereum and other coins. Um, so... What a lot of people did was they either took a loan against their Bitcoin or Litecoin or Ethereum um, and, and did, you know, 50% loan to value. So if they have $100,000 worth of Bitcoin, they'll borrow $50,000 to um, buy other crypto or to buy equipment or just to do to do whatever with it. Because if you feel like Bitcoin is going to appreciate like it was going back you know last year it was it was just crazy how the price of bitcoin reached all the way all the way to sixty nine seventy thousand uh, dollars so a lot of people just thought it was going to keep going forever right so they'll they they, they take money against uh their bitcoin if it's worth seventy thousand dollars they'll borrow up to fifty percent but they have then to put up their bitcoin to get the, those funds so you don't hold your, uh, your, your Bitcoin anymore. Um, so with what's going on in the economy and what's going on with crypto, it's not just crypto that's being affected. It's, it's everything, right? So yeah. I know Tesla and Amazon and, um, you know, Facebook and everybody. Netflix, everybody's being affected. Uh, but anyways, if, if, if you borrowed it, if you borrowed against Bitcoin at 70,000, well, it's now, Twenty thousand dollars. So then, a lot of people are getting margin calls um, because if you're borrowing against it, you got to make sure that there's enough um, Bitcoin or the value that Bitcoin um, can support that fifty percent against it loan. So if if you borrowed um, fifty percent from from seventy thousand, so you're borrowing thirty five thousand dollars against your seventy thousand dollar Bitcoin. Well, now your Bitcoin's worth twenty thousand dollars. So, you know, so you need to add more Bitcoin to be able to support that thirty-five k loan. Um, so that's why a lot of people are getting margin calls and liquidated because they can't uh, they can't cover their their margin. Uh, so that's what that's what uh, Celsius does. They they also do uh, something where you can basically have them custody your your Bitcoin and they'd give you 5% for doing that. Um, and what's happened with Celsius is that 
there were so many people that were getting margin calls and Celsius themselves were utilizing people's uh, Bitcoin to also do the same thing. They, they were used taking loans against people's Bitcoins, their crypto, and they were also doing what, um, you know, with, with Ethereum, if you're staking your Ethereum, <coughs> you don't get your Ethereum back until they go 2.0. Yeah. Uh, so that could be three months. It could be three years down the road. You just don't know. Uh, so they were in a situation where they have all these Ethereums that they were staking that they have no access to for who knows how long. Um, so long story short, uh, Celsius is now hiring um, bankruptcy attorneys. And th what they had to do was they, they had to freeze everybody's account because people were scared that, hey, I'm gonna lose all my crypto. So there was a mass um, exodus of people trying to take money out of their um, Celsius account. So what they ended up doing is freezing everybody's account, no transfers, you couldn't take any money out. Um, and, you know, they, they so it's kind of, kind of interesting because they said, hey, you, you can add more crypto into your account to cover some of these margin calls but it's like okay why would you want to do that if we're probably not going to see any of our crypto right it's probably part of the bankruptcy so you're just adding on to the problem and uh so there, there's a lot of people that are that that are in limbo i think 10 states have already filed uh lawsuits against uh against uh, celsius um and so forth so i mean it's just one of these things that, that, that it's unfortunate because they are a USA company, they felt like they were a safer company to go to. Um, and there's several several companies like BlockFi, Nexo, SmartFi, there's several companies like them that do something similar. Uh, but I think with this specific one, they took a little more risk than they should have. They're, they're lending or they're giving out taking loans against everybody everybody else's uh, funds which is no different what banks are doing but yeah banks it's they're they're kind of protected by the the government if something like that happens right they have bailouts that that happens if uh, anything um, major drastically occurs so so that's kind of what's what's going on uh, with Celsius among other things wow that's that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I never got involved with any of those types of like projects. I, I live in the crypto world. I live a pretty boring life. You know, I don't do a lot of risky things in cryptos. I figure cryptos are already viewed as risky enough so eh, why push it <laughs> yeah that's true wish we were all as smart as you are ben no i'm not smart i'm just, <laughs> uh, i'm uh, i don't know enough about like what they were doing in order to have a good judge of, of who's good and who's not, you know. So I, that's why I just every week I buy, I hodl, I, I accumulate, and I'm, I'm in, I'm one of those long holds like i will probably never sell any of my cryptos and it, it it's unless i had to i highly doubt i ever would yeah that's that's a uh pretty a uh, pr pretty smart i know dollar cost average is is something that people have always been talking about because it's always it's always difficult to catch the best time to uh, get into it right so it's like you know you you wait and wait for the, for the best time and when you do it's like 
you could have bought it cheaper or, or it goes the other way where, um, you know, it's, it's, it's the market just, you buy it and then market tanks. And I don't know, it, it's, it's pretty interesting, but just watching some of the, uh, the folks that, you know, tone vase and, and some of the, um, guys that, uh, that I know along with Michael Carter and Bitsby Trippin, you know, they think, they think 20 is the, the, the magic number that, um, it's going to be hard to get below that, but you just never know. And one of these things, yeah. one of the things that, um, I don't, I don't think a lot of people think about is, is the impact from what's going on around us. Right. So we can look at charts all day and try to predict the price, but you can't predict a war. You know, what if, what if China all of a sudden invades Taiwan, how that's going to affect the whole market. Uh, yeah, nobody yeah. really predicted what, uh, with Ukraine and Russia and what's going on there. And, and for somebody to say that that's not affecting crypto, it's okay. I think, <laughs> I think it is in some capacity and, and, yeah, uh, I don't and also, think people appreciate what this war is. Um, this is not just Russia and a little country and that that's really that's that's not it. What we have going on is is really the end of the Western Empire. Now that sounds drastic. Because it is. Uh, for the last 140 years, ever since the end of the Civil War, uh, we have been creating a global monetary empire. That's what America has done. And unfortunately, history always lends itself to repeating, or at least rhyming. And America's monetary empire is coming to an end. The value of our dollar is dropping. The global influence of our dollar is dropping. We have ships off of California that will not load American products and return them to Asia because the shipping companies will not accept U.S dollars anymore they want uh, they want either Chinese currency or they want gold uh, some of them would actually accept cryptos if we were able to pay them in that which we could but the Treasury and the government, is uh, that's what Joe Biden just uh, s signed a sh a sh a shipping bill yesterday, and they kind of glossed over it, like, "Hey, I signed this thing that should help us with." shipping products uh no no it's not <laughs> because you can't force these companies to accept our currency and that's why joe biden again yesterday sent like 300 was it 300 million or 300 billion? It was a ton of money. To, to where did he send it to? Uh, all over the world. Mm. 
for infrastructure assistance. Mm. Let me rephrase that. Please use our dollars. That's what it should have been called. Because China has been giving money to Africa, the Middle East, uh, Asia, all over Asia, um, Indonesia, South Korea, uh, up around Russia, with Russia. Um, they have been issuing their currency, which is growing stronger towards the U.S. dollar right now. What most people don't understand, the re has everyone's waiting. They're like, why hasn't China devalued their currency yet? They're not gonna. They're not in it for so, uh, supply chain advantages. They're in it to knock the dollar out of the number one currency in the world. That's what they're doing. The dollar's at its weakest point right now, volume-wise. So the the velocity of the dollar is junk right now. That's why, see, this is all lies. That's the issue we got here. We got Joe Biden saying he's going over to Saudi Arabia to see if they'll pump us some oil. <laughs> That's bull crap. What he's trying to do is go over to Saudi Arabia and revive the petrodollar because it died a year, year and a half ago when oil went negative. That was the death of the petrodollar officially. Now, no one else is using our dollars except like Europe, which is, you know, not that big of a deal. So he's going over there trying to convince Saudi Arabia and the surrounding OPEC to create the petrodollar again. Problem is, they've already made deals with Russia and China. They're not going to do it. Because what gave the dollar power was oil. After we delisted from gold or linked with gold, we linked it with oil. Where, where the global oil producers would only accept U.S. dollars. Not anymore. They accept all kinds of currencies now. Well, uh, that makes the dollar just like every other currency in the world. It's floating against all the rest. It isn't linked with the commodity. So if the dollar's floating, the dollar can drop. And it's been dropping, but all the other currencies ha have also been dropping. So it didn't look like the dollar was losing global usage. But now, now we're in a different world. We have 
we have the U.S. dollar inflation here in America. All those dollars we printed, all of the derivatives, all of the uh, the foreign, you know, assistance, all, all of the money we printed in the last two years is coming home to roost. And because the globe is selling dollars, they're selling dollars for other currencies and other products but we aren't able to actually keep our GDP level and and our trade surpluses are so negative now that we've got nothing we no one wants to trade us goods for our dollars anymore. So they're spending our dollars in America. That's the inflation we're experiencing. All of the currency that was moving around the earth is now just pouring into America. And that is pushing up prices on our goods. And it's not going to stop because Russia has our dollars. China has our dollars. If, if we screw up, if we do one wrong move, which trust me, Joe Biden's gonna, gonna do it. All of a sudden, there's gonna be a rush. And I mean, Venezuelan type of rush. And you'll see it. Mark my words, give it a few weeks, maybe a month and you'll hear price controls where the government will go, well, we're going to have to cap the price of oil. <laughs> as soon as that happens, we ain't going to have a lick of oil around here because then we go into shortages because no one will produce it. No one will sell it. No one will refine it. If you're gonna cap their prices they can charge, nope, you're done. They'll, they'll shut their production facilities down before they go into the negative. They'd have to because they couldn't do it. A rising global commodity. You cannot have prices rising outside of America and yet have price fixing inside of America when we don't produce enough for our own country. That's why Joe, Joe Biden is talking about outlawing energy exports. You know why? Because they're getting ready to price cap. Are they ever, are, are they ever going to open up? Um, what is that? The, the, was it the Keystone Pipeline? Oh, no, no, no. They'll never do that. This is all on purpose. Yeah. This is the destruction of the American and Western world. This is what you're witnessing. It's it, people have 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 actually been warning for years 
that this would happen. This is why China is in lockdown. It ain't because of COVID. I can tell you that. They're practicing. That's what they're doing. The communist Chinese government is not locking their civilians down because of one COVID case. Anybody that believes that is an idiot. All right. They may be communist, but they're not stupid. Why do you think for the last two years, China's been loading up on corn, loading up on all of these, all of these commodities? They know what's coming. And that's why they're, uh, China, if you look at their history, every time things start to get crazy, there's a reason they built that wall. Every time it starts to get crazy. You're talking about the the wall, the Great Wall in China? <laughs> yeah, there's a reason. Because when the outside world goes crazy, China just... See, China has a different mentality than the Western world does. They have a long term. They'll wait it out. They're patient. They're like, hey, you guys. Hey ben, we got our time is up for this session, so we'll continue oh, this yeah. in the second second session after a commercial break. We'll be right back, folks. All right. Did you know that you can sit down one on one with me or one of our other experts here at Crypto World? We can help you open up your first wallet roll over your retirement into crypto, move large amounts of crypto safely, give you advice on how and what to mine, and more. If you could use expert guidance along your crypto journey, we are here to help. Visit our website to schedule your consultation today. And we're back. Welcome to the show, guys. This is Bitcoin Ben, J. Wade Crypto Show, brought to you by Crypto World, out in St. Charles. J. Wade. Yo. Brother. Where are you guys at and what you got going on? I know you guys are doing a lot on like mining. Yeah, so we're located in St. Charles, Missouri off Cave Springs and 70. So we're right off the highway. And, you know, our address is 2788 Mugi Road. Uh, give us a call, 636-317-1053. And definitely mining is is it's actually the best time to to get into mining right now because uh, the price of equipment usually goes with the price of Bitcoin and and right now the same machines that we were selling for twelve to fifteen thousand dollars four or five months ago you can get them for like six thousand dollars if not cheaper and so you know I mean at the difficulty rate also is is going down just because there's some older machines that have to shut down uh, because their profitability isn't there for them to mine. Uh, so if you really believe that Bitcoin is going to be uh, 40, 50, 60 plus thousand dollars down the road, this is the best time to buy mining equipment. So we actually have some uh, uh, spots available for hosting. Uh, if anybody is interested, it's roughly about nine cents per kilowatt hour. I know there's a few people from uh, your founders group that reached out to me um, this this a few days ago, or one today, one yesterday, about this opportunity. But uh, we, we have about 20 spots available for uh, uh, machines that were just plugged in, S19, 104, J Pros that were just plugged in literally a week ago. Uh, but the guy that uh, plugged them in um, needs uh, some cash, so he's willing to uh, switch out basically the wallets, and also you would own the machines. Uh, so different opportunities like that. We have a customer in right now that's that's buying, uh, 
you know, some uh, um, GPU rigs uh, just because the prices have come down and he knows that the price of Ethereum is going to come back up uh, in a few months. So, you know, it's, it's one of these things like when uh, people want to go buy Bitcoin when it's like at, at peak, right? 69, 70,000 because they feel like they're FOMOing in. But when it's at it 20 or 25,000, it's like people are waiting around. But really, the smart people are the ones that are buying right now. Uh, it's the same thing goes for for mining. It's, uh, you know, the, the prices are going to go back up as soon as the price of Bitcoin goes goes up. So, so yeah, we have different opportunities like that. Um, we're also doing something with Crypto World where for $50, you can uh, get on a Zoom call with us and just chat about anything crypto. If you have a, if you're new to crypto, uh, you don't have an understanding of the why aspect. We'll get on the zoom call with you. We'll talk to you. Um, and you know, if you have questions about mining, we can, we can answer those questions, NFTs, security. We can talk about, uh, different things like, you know, we're getting a mat that we're getting a ton of people because of what's going on with, with Celsius and what's going on with, uh, Coinbase, we're getting a ton of people coming in here asking for uh, wallets, and you know, with uh, we do carry the 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 ledgers and and also the trezors and the ballet wallets, uh, and also we we have the Calyx Solution uh, laptops here at the store. So great opportunity to be able to secure your cryptos into something that is not in a centralized exchange. Uh, oh. because, yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because you know, it's it's easy easier said than done, and I know I've fallen into this trap uh, a few times, and it's, it's bit me. Um, but learn from my mistake. Take things off the exchange, put it in a wallet, and don't leave it on an exchange or Celsius or anything like that. So, so we we have wallets here in the store. We're getting people that are that are uh, putting their their cryptos in a. Uh, cold storage wallet. Uh, and like I said, we have the Calyx Solutions laptop here. You can order them here at the store. We can demo them for you. We can show you how, how to use them. Uh, so just stop by. Uh, we're open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, Sunday is the only day we're closed. But uh, outside of that, yeah, give us, give, us, give us a call or go on our website, shopcryptoworld.com. And if you were one to speak to one of our, uh, you know, associates about something specific, just do the, the consultation link is right in the front page. And then we, we basically set up a, a Zoom call with you. We have Calendly that we would send you for uh, scheduling. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of the things, things that's going on over here. But, uh, but I know you, you're, you're going to Florida, right? Ben, you're, uh, yeah. you, you saw some spots out there that would be good for crypto world. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, I personally plan on owning a few crypto worlds uh, in Florida mainly, uh, also one in El Salvador, uh, and. and uh, when you're investing, you want to look at the future and not really the present. I know that cryptos are not going away. No matter what happens in the economy, no matter what happens globally, cryptos are the security answer Cryptos are the transactionary unit answer. They are the, the means of exchange answer for the future. We just have to get through this rough patch of the old system collapsing. And it's okay. It you shouldn't fear this. Number one, why? There's nothing you can do about it. It's it's happening. There's nothing you nothing you can do about it. Not number two. This is needed. This is a flip, just like an a 
any other economy, governments and government structures eventually have to be reset. There has to be a, a creative destruction event in everything in nature. Everything that is a system is in the creative destruction loop. I'll use a few examples. A tree. It, it's originally a seed. You put it in the ground, it grows. That's the creative part. Well, then it ages and weather and roots and and age and time, eventually that tree is going to die and it's going to fall over. There, the tree didn't do anything wrong. It, it was just, that was its life's, its natural life. Everything else in nature, everything else in the universe, everything else, people, companies, um, organizations, governments, republics, democracies, everything, everything ha lives inside this creative destruction cycle. We as humans, we grow, we get older, and eventually we die. That's not good or bad. It's just, it is what it is. And so don't be afraid of, of the global and regional governmental structures and economies changing. The hard part is the transition. That's why our founding fathers, that's why they structured it like they did. That's why uh, our government is renewable in our founding documents. We can demolish, and the Constitution uses that word, demolish the old government and reconstitute a new well, that's, that's what we are going through because this global shift, this, this global currency empire that we have created over the last 140 years, it is now no longer efficient. It is no longer capable of growing with the populace and the technology or i.e. the environment of the globe. It's done. It had its heyday and now it's, it's no longer technologically and morally feasible. That's okay. Let it die. It's, it's, it's good because then we, we reallocate that energy into the next system. That's what I've been telling people for years. Cryptos, 
is not a sector of the economy. Cryptos is the future economy. And um, when, when the European banks were created, they were created actually by large shipping corporations. That's who created the European banking system. And as soon as they were created, they, they issued and they declared that we would have a global monetary unit of account and we would use gold for their shipping and then they implemented silver. And then for a while they tried using copper, but there was way too much copper. <laughs> and so after that, around the Civil War, over here in America, we found a lot of gold. It was called the gold rush. Yep. All right. I don't know. I don't. I don't mean to interrupt, but did you did you see uh, Michael Saylor posted something on Uganda? I don't know if you saw that, but they Not yet. they found oh 30, yeah thirty one million tons of gold worth twelve trillion dollars. So that just wiped out the whole gold market. It's like okay, gold is plentiful. Bitcoin is scarce. Yeah. Right? So it's like we know we know how much Bitcoin is out there. We know what the cap is for Bitcoin. But for gold, I can't tell you how much gold is out there. Uh, well, so let's just put it this way. What they just found is about half of what we thought we had out of the ground. Yeah, and guess guess what country? Um is part of this uh, refining. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee refining you. all these gold. That's what it's probably why you know all of a sudden China in the last decade has had so much. Uh, you know they've been giving Uganda and all these countries a lot of money, and we'll we'll see what the impact of this is with all, all now China being controlling all this gold with Uganda. Yeah, it's it's. And history repeats itself. It rhymes. In the 1800s, that's that's what that's what triggered the Civil War. Don't let anybody ever tell you that the Civil War was about slavery. That was the marketing campaign. The real reason was gold. The real reason was currency that they knew there was so much gold in America that it would crush the banks. It would crush the global mon monetary system. So they needed to create a fiat system. Well, you can't just do that overnight. You have to have a event. You have to have something you can point at and go, that's why we're having problems. Because the average Joe, the average Jane, they don't think like governments do. Governments think think of peace versus uh, violence. <laughs> right, China deals with this all the time. See, people think that China is this heavy-handed government that, that crushes its people. 
the Chinese Communist government walks on eggshells around its people. Yeah, they try to manage them. But you know how many protests are in China every year? Oh, they're one wrong move away from a billion people. Fuck. Jim fudging up. <laughs> I didn't say Fudgen. it. I caught myself. <laughs> Almost had to get bleeped. Yeah. Uh, fudging up their government. It's governments, they try to manage the expectations of their people. Because they don't want them too happy. They don't want them too sad. They want them right in the middle where they're not going to lead a revolution and they're not going to get too lazy. That's why the Federal Reserve's two priorities are the interest rate, the cost of capital, and employment. Their job is not unemployment. It's employment. Making sure that just enough people are employed that the salaries do not go up that fast. That's why the Federal Reserve is actually doing what they're doing. It isn't just the inflation they're fighting. It's wage inflation. That's what will kill an economy quick. Making because, too much money. Yeah, exact. that's exactly it. Whenever the employment structure shifts, from the employer to the employee having leverage is when the government gets worried. Because if the employee has too much leverage, then wages will go up. If the employer has too much leverage, then wages will go down and we'll have a depression. That's why they use interest rates against corporations and, and interest rates against the employees. It's, it's all just, they trying to keep it at a 2% per year in, uh, inflation rate. It's growth, but it's predictable, small, incremental growth. Yeah, I don't know about you, but uh, I was looking at a, uh, there's a restaurant in St. Louis that's looking for servers desperately, but they're paying anywhere from 35 to $75 per hour plus tips. That just blew my mind. I was like, holy cow. Makes you want to grab a tray. I, <laughs> that's what I was telling, <laughs> telling some of the guys here. I might uh, dip out of here by by four or five. <laughs> you did <damn> right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's... I mean, it, it's so wild. There, there, there's, there's, uh, I cannot believe that, that companies, especially on the, in the restaurant side, they're having so much issue trying to find people to work. Um, so I just think of that of, okay, what's, what's the effect of, of something like that, right? So if you're gonna pay somebody 35 to $75 an hour to serve you, they're gonna have to make that up somewhere. So it's almost like the government, right? So if they're gonna print all this money, these trillions and trillions of dollars, that they're gonna give to us, right? To help us w during the, the, these rough times, during COVID and all this. 
well, how, or is that who's going to pay that back? <laughs> Where is that money coming from? Nope. So I guess uh, going to China to, to buy some of their gold that they just pumped out of uh, Uganda. I don't know. Yeah, dude. I don't know. The, the price of gold is going to flash crash soon. It It isn't by accident that they all of a sudden tripped and said, oh, look, here's $4 trillion worth of gold. Gee, shucks, look what we found. No. They've had that knowledge. All right. One thing about China, China doesn't do anything unless China knows China's win going to win on it. That's what Trump actually found out when trying to negotiate trade. China's got a billion people. They're three of our economies worth of people. They don't worry about uh, supply and demand. That's why they're closing their doors. We got plenty of de plenty of demand. China doesn't truly need us to survive. They can lock their door and produce for their own people and enrich their own people without ever dealing with the outside world very easily and 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 America we could have done that that's what Trump was setting everything up to do Trump was doing exactly what China was doing because anybody who knows anything about history knows that this happened during the Roman Empire. As it goes down, get out of the way and plan on the rebuild. That's why Trump's slogan was make America great again. It's because he knows what's coming. Everyone in the government at a certain level, knows what's coming. The Economist on Bloomberg, they know what's coming. They're just trying to message, message it so the herd doesn't start running. I, the the freaking barn is on fire. Shh. Don't tell the horses. That's what we got going on. They're trying to walk us out of the barn. Everything's fine. Don't worry. We're managing it. Everything's going fine. When really the barn's a blazing, folks. This is just another example in history of governments trying to manage the decline of the society structure. I just saw this. I just saw this go through where the head of Russia's central bank recently uh, is discussing using Bitcoin and other cryptos for international settlement. settlement. So watch out. So we're, we're about out of time. I know uh, I went by yeah. pretty quick. All but, right. Uh, Everybody have a great day and a great rest of your weekend. Yes. Wow. You too. All right. Take care guys.